So I'm gonna go straight into it. I'm not gonna waste your time. Um, I really don't hear some of the negative things that some of the negative reviews are saying about the BMW 606 S2 Anniversary Edition speakers we have here today. Now I've had the speaker for the past few months now, kind of living with them, so to speak, and paired it up with many amplifiers, many speaker positioning and so on. So we'll talk about that in this video. But to be fair, it's not like there's only negative reviews of this speaker. There is a lot of positive reviews on YouTube. And in fact, from the consumer side as well with 4.9 star rating on Google. So definitely there's people that love it. But if you're curious why it may be so polarizing, well, I'll give you the answer right now. I'm not gonna waste your time. It comes down to taste. People have different tastes. People like black coffee versus you know, cream coffee and smoothie and whatever it is. So it's gonna really come down to your taste in music, what you play and what it may be. Now with this being said, oddly enough, I am a person who doesn't enjoy bright speakers whatsoever. In fact, I kind of sway towards the tube side, the warm characteristic, um, that's what I like. But even then, I kind of really enjoyed the BMW 606 S2 speakers. And I do like BMW speakers overall in general because I see the beauty in what they are doing. And no, let's not pretend like this is not a BMW speaker and they made something so miserably wrong all of a sudden or so great all of a sudden. None of that is true. This is still a BMW sound to me. There are differences between the past models and the current models, but that difference is like as much as the old Klipsch versus the new Klipsch, that kind of difference. Still a Klipsch sound, still a BMW sound, but more refined, slightly more different, um, but not like drastically to a point where if you didn't like BMW speakers before, you probably will not like this one. It's not like this will change your taste all of a sudden because they change the sound signature so much. That's absolutely not. So for reference, I have two speakers here today. I have the BMW 606 S2, obviously, and then I have the new ELAC W reference speakers. Now, these are excellent speakers, uh, don't get me wrong, but they're tuned for safety, in my opinion meaning they ha they're gonna have that you know, really good bass response and a response that most people are gonna be welcoming. One way or the other, some people may complain that there's not enough detail if you're someone who loves a lot of detail. But overall, the ELAC W reference is going to be a safe zone for many people and it's tuned that way for obvious reasons. It's going to be a safe play meaning that a lot of people are gonna be welcoming the sound. It's not going to be too aggressive on the top end or you know too bassy, nothing like that. It's gonna be a pretty balanced sound so that most people listening to it will say, wow, that's a great speaker for the price. Whereas the BMW 606 S2 is going to be slightly more polarizing and it's gonna to cater to a specific set of people. And I'm sure they know that. But with the 606 S2 Anniversary Edition, I think what they tried to do here was kind of go for a little bit of a more general public and kind of give them a chance to experience the BMW sound. And that's why you partially see a woofer that's used usually in the higher lineup of BMW speakers in this one, which is a plus because you're getting a much higher quality driver in a unit that costs much less. But also looking at the tweeter, we can see that uh, for instance, the ELAC debut reference is using a soft dome tweeter, whereas the 606 S2 Anniversary Edition is using a one inch aluminum dome tweeter. So there's going to be definite differences between using a soft dome and an aluminum dome tweeter. For instance, the aluminum dome tweeter is gonna come off a little bit more hot on the top end. And when I say hot, I do mean bright. You can get this speaker to sound pretty darn bright and pretty messy on the top high frequencies. However, there are things that you need to follow as a general rule or general guideline when you're setting up a pair of speakers, whether it be the W ELAC reference or even the you know, 606 S2. It really doesn't matter which speaker you set up, it's just that with the 606 S2, it does become a little bit more critical because it is sensitive to placement more so than the debut reference, at least in my opinion and my experience. Now, when I was setting up the BMW 606 S2, I placed them exactly where I placed all my speakers. And then I quickly noticed that the soundstage was not really thrown behind the speakers as much as I would have liked. 
I want a little bit more spacious information. So I pulled them a little bit forward and so gave it a little bit more room from the wall behind it. So now it was about, I would say four, four and a half feet from the back wall, uh, the wall behind the speakers. And now it sang. The sound stage was large and really three dimensional and you can really sense all the micro details within the music and the sound stage was thrown behind the speakers. Another thing I noticed was that when I pulled them out into the room and gave it some room to breathe, so to speak, the speakers became quickly less bright and brittle. And I know that the tendency is that you will want to push the speakers you know, to the wall because you know whether you wanna set it flush or the aesthetics or whatever it is, but really with all speakers, I really encourage you to pull the speakers out into the room. And this is critical with this speaker. But if you can't do that, then I would say just forget about this speaker unless you like a really bright sound. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that you don't really want to be ear level to the tweeter because that's gonna introduce a pretty sharp sound and a pretty messy high frequency. What you want is to be somewhere between the middle of the tweeter and the woofer. And that's where I wanted my ear level to be exact. This means that with some reviewers, you know, I know that it's not ideal to have multiple heights of speaker stands, even for a reviewer or anyone for that matter. I mean, in this studio right now, I have many speaker stands from really tiny ones all the way up to uh, 28 inches and 32 inches. So re you really have to play around with your sitting position. If you're sitting low versus sitting high and you know, having an ear level and also the speaker stands you're using, it all matters. Really what you wanna do is you want to make sure you're sitting where you're sitting and your ear level is going to match the height of the speaker from uh, your distance. So that's going to be a little bit of a trial and error, but you should do this for every speaker, don't get me wrong. Although this speaker is sensitive to how you place them and how you place them can really break or make the experience, all speakers, including the uh, ELAC debut reference, is going to benefit from a proper speaker stand height depending on how high or how low you're sitting. So keep that in mind. If you want the full experience with any speaker, you want to have the proper speaker height. And this speaker, the 606, really teaches you that. Now when it comes to amp pairings and you know, kind of equipment matching, I've heard multiple th different things about the speaker being sensitive to amp pairings, to you know, not being sensitive, and I think there's a lot of confusion here. Now to kind of clarify with my experience in line, this speaker can be driven um, with as low as 30 watt integrated amplifiers. I mean, they can be driven with even much lower amplifiers if you're in a smaller room. However, there is a difference between driving a speaker and then synergy. There is definitely a line there. So when you're driving a speaker, yes, you get sound out of it. You get noise out of it. But that's not really what you want. You want good synergy so that you get good sound. And when I, what I mean by synergy is like a handshake between your speakers and your components. So for example, when you pair this up with a uh, Rotel A11 integrated amplifier, yeah, there's sound, but I don't think that's such a good pairing because that quickly becomes a little bit too bright, actually a lot bright. And especially if you have these speakers placed wrong and you have that pairing, that's a kind of a disastrous combination right there. And you'll quickly realize how much you hate this speaker to a point where you may call it sibilant, distorted, or just awful and ringing and all the awful things I can say about this speaker. Yeah, it's gonna be right there. However, if you pull them out of the room, place them correctly, and you pair it with something like the NAD C298 amplifier, which is a purified module based amplifier, also measures extremely well, but has a lot of power and dynamic to deliver, that pairing is not gonna be bright whatsoever, especially if you have these speakers set up properly. However, even with that combination, I found the mid-range to be slightly lean sounding and sometimes just ever so slightly bright sounding. And for my own enjoyment, even though I think that a lot of people will just 
live with that combination and really be happy with it because it's not like it's too lean sounding it has body to the sound but i wanted something a little bit more fuller sounding a little bit more three-dimensional so i paired it up with a tube amplifier i paired it up with the line magnetic tube amplifier i have and that pushes out 48 watts or something like that in class a and that was just absolutely fantastic it gave the three-dimensional sound gave a lot of more space to the instruments and the vocals around it and there was just no question it was just absolutely beautiful no sibilance whatsoever however it still wasn't the best pairing for a poor recording now it was acceptable with a poor recording don't get me wrong but with certain recordings that had you know sibilances it's not gonna hide that fact let's get this straight this speaker is not going to mask or color uh, things in the track that's going to make it sound you know more liquid or smoother this is going to be a pretty sharp detailed sounding speaker so meaning that the imaging is going to be fantastic the center imaging is going to be absolutely fantastic and you're, you're gonna hear all the micro details within the music and for that to happen you have to understand that when you place a microphone right don't, don't be too literal here but let's say if you play a place a microphone you're gonna have it few distances away from the uh, singer or the uh, instrument and that's technically where you want the speaker to be so that the singer appears behind the speakers so that's exactly how you're supposed to place them because you want to create a sense of space and if you don't give the speakers space how are they going to create that space the sense of space it's going to be a more 2d sound and not a 3d sound so to get that 3D sound, like, like again, you do have to give breathing room for the speaker. And that is critical. That's why I am emphasizing once again and repeating myself. But once you've done that, you really don't get anything like it for this price range. You get really three-dimensional sound with really good detailed response. And you get all the micro details floating around. And there is going to be a sense of space. It's going to be a spacious sounding speaker. And to be honest, this is a classic sound from BMW speakers. I mean, I've heard BMW speakers before and that's kind of like the spacious presentation you get. And really you get that with a little bit of high frequency um, emphasis. And that's why some people may find it bright sounding, but the high frequency emphasis here, I think is done really well. Now, if you don't understand what I'm saying, I'm gonna demonstrate right now. I'm going to be increasing the high frequency of my voice right now in the microphone. I think you should use a headphone or a speaker to really test this out, but you should get a sense of more space and stuff going around around me. And now we're back to normal. And right there, I just kind of increased the high frequency where the spacious information should be stored. However, I didn't do any you know, spe you know, spectacular tuning or anything like that. And that's why you may find it fatiguing, my voice be, to be fatiguing or, you know, kind of noisy or whatever it is. But the thing you want to listen to there is the more spacious information. And that's kind of what you get with the speaker, except it's obviously tuned well so that it doesn't have all those nasty stuff going on uh, with, my, with the voice and the uh, high frequency information. So when you pair up a tube amplifier to a speaker like this that has already a very nice spacious information, then what you end up getting is a much more spacious sound, a lot of spaciousness. So to give you a reference here, it's like recording a clap in a very small confined tunnel or in a confiscated room versus recording a clap in a large stadium. So to kind of give you an actual demonstration, please wear headphones and speakers for this one as well. Here's a clap that I would be doing, let's say in a confined space. Now here's a clap that I would be doing in a large stadium with a lot of space around me. So obviously that sounds very different. Same clap, but they just sound very different. And how I did that was through after processing by adding spacious information uh, through my mix and mastering kit to, to the um, latter clap. And in similar ways, some recordings are recorded this way, but that's not the point. The point is that with this speaker, you can achieve basically that more spaciousness and spacious information with recordings. And that clap is not gonna sound as bright and as sibilant when there's more space around it. 
And that's exactly why also you have to give the speaker a lot of breathing room around it, behind the wall, to the sidewall, and so on, so that you don't run into the trouble of making the speaker in a tight position to recreate sound in a very tight, confined you know, situation where it's forced to essentially give you that clap that is sibilant sounding instead of sounding accurate and spacious as it should. So your room, as you know, plays a large portion into how a speaker sounds. It's no different with this speaker. It's just that with speakers like this, it's gonna need more care in terms of positioning and amp pairing. Because the tuning is this way. If the ELAC debut reference had a high frequency tilted, you know, more spacious high frequency kind of sound, then it will be the exact same way. It will get messy if you place them towards the wall behind them. That's why the ELAC debut reference goes for a sound that is much more easygoing and easier to place without the end user kind of noticing the artifacts and the consequences of placing the speakers in a wrong tight space. So that's probably why there's so much polarizing. And again, this is my speculation, but that's probably why there's a lot of polarizing opinions about this speaker. And because all of our rooms are different, all of our tastes are different. But in this video, I just wanted to give you my opinion, my findings, so that you can optimize and actually give this speaker a justice. Because when you do, this speaker is a fantastic sounding speaker. BMW voices with female vocals and male vocals is no secret. It is absolutely beautiful, but that's why a lot of Chinese and Asian people like it. Even Koreans like myself, they absolutely love it with Macintosh amplifiers because the Macintosh gear just meets well with BMW gear. And it just sounds great. The male vocals, female vocals have this characteristic of having space around it and really giving you that kind of projection of sound. Just absolutely beautiful. It's just, just the right amount of sibilance, as if you would hear it in a real setting. And it give, gives you that kind of realistic kind of reach and grab the singer kind of feeling. And another thing that I do really love about these speakers is that these speakers really do disappear and they are very seamless. You do not hear any crossover points with this speaker as far as I can tell. The frequency response is seamless all across. I don't hear any you know, crossover points or any kind of you know, weird distortion or anything like that or ringing as some of the negative reviews have pointed out. I personally don't hear any of that when I give this speaker proper room and proper amplification. And in fact, I find it just, it just disappears like almost like a mini speaker, mini bookshelf speakers. They're really good at, you know, kind of disappearing. Same thing, except this is a much bigger speaker with, you know, more bass. It just disappears. And I just love that fact because when I hear a bookshelf speaker, that's kind of what I want is that speaker to kind of disappear and leave me with nothing but myself and music. And that's what this speaker does. Now there is going to be a downside with this speaker, not BMW speakers overall, but this speaker specifically, is that I found the off axis response to be not satisfactory. When I moved my head during listening sessions, the center imaging wasn't dead center and it was kind of moving and I could hear the left speaker and then the right speaker. And so I had to be in one position and the sweet spot wasn't too big. So I had limited freedom when I was listening to the speaker. Now, with the Toen, obviously you have to play around with it on how much you tow these speakers in, but I think that's less critical than giving the spe speakers space to breathe. Once you give these speakers space to breathe, then you can tow them in, tow them out into the room, do whatever you want until you get that high frequency just right for your preference. Obviously, towing these in uh, towards your ears is gonna give you a little bit more sharper um, sharper edge kind of sound and some people may find that bright or too sharp and placing them kind of towed out towards the room is going to give you a little bit less fatiguing presentation and that's what I like it gives you kind of a little bit more sound stage and more um, wider uh, presentation but that's just what I like and you should really play around with the speakers to make sure that you get to your preference. So that's pretty much it in terms of the overall sound signature and my findings with these speakers. But if you haven't noticed already, the high frequency is going to be the key highlight with this speaker. And it's going to be the what makes the speaker great, but at the same time, make the experience or break the experience. So really, 
it's gonna require some effort from your part as the end listener. And that could be a negative thing. And I do see it as a negative to someone new to this hi-fi hobby. However, with all great speakers that cost under $1,000 and you know, provides a lot, kind of reminds me of like MagnaPen LRS speakers. It's on the same level there. This speaker can be really rewarding to a point where if you're a fan of magical speakers or Focal speakers, then this speaker is going to be very rewarding to you because this speaker provides a lot on the table, just requires effort from your part in terms of placement and amp pairing, just like the MagnaPen LRS and speakers that are catered towards real high end, but kind of there's a downside with uh, the end user having to play a little bit of their part. At the end of the day, you really have to listen for it yourself anyways. So that's pretty much it for me, and I'll see you guys on the next one. If this video was helpful to you, make sure to click that like button. It does help us out tremendously, and it doesn't cost you anything. And also consider subscribing and joining our Patreon to keep us independent and keep these unbiased reviews going.